Hello all, this is Anish with you. Welcome to my channel. In this ASP.NET Core tutorial, we will see how to create an inventory project using ASP.NET Core MVC file. Let's see the demo of the project which we are going to make. This application is called as Inventory Manager. I have already created a user named Code S, which is my channel name. I am logging into the application using the user code s later i will show you how to register a new user well we have successfully logged into the application this is the home page of the application let me show you the modules of the application now the application has six master modules namely units products countries cities suppliers and customers then we have the transaction modules as well, namely outwards or material issuance note, inwards and then purchase order. The outwards or material issuance note records the stock sold or issued to the customers. The inwards records all the stocks are received from the supplier. The purchase order books the stocks needed for the near future. The stock balance shows you the current on and stock status of the company. The current stock balance is equals to total inwards minus outwards. The inventory is getting calculated based on your inwards, I mean the purchases and the sales. Our inventory software is made up of these modules. In fact, these are the core modules of the inventory software. After completing this, we can always add the additional features. Let's see the modules detail in the sense how it is made and its purpose. The first module of our interest is unit. I choose unit as the first module because it is an independent module. Let me show you the unit module. This is the listing screen of the unit module. It has search and paging options. Let's create a unit to check its functionality. First click the create button. Then enter three pieces set for the name text box of the unit master creation screen. And then enter three pieces set for the description text box of the unit master creation screen. Now click the create button to create and save the unit. That's so easy isn't it? Our unit is saved to the DB. Now we will see the edit screen of the unit. Click the edit button of the unit with the name as three pieces set and having the unit ID as five. This is the edit screen of the unit. This screen is so similar to create screen of the unit. In here remove the blank spaces from the name text box of the unit. And then click the edit button to save the changes. Well, the changes are updated to the DB. Next, we will see the delete screen of the unit master. Let's click one of the delete button of the unit master listing screen. This is the delete screen of the unit master. It has two buttons, one to confirm the delete, the other button called back. This pattern is to go back to the listing screen in case if we change our mind. On clicking the delete button, the loaded unit gets deleted from the database. We can notice that the unit named two pieces pair got deleted from the database and it is disappeared from the unit listing screen as well. Next module is product. Let's click the product menu to load the product listing screen. This module is similar to the unit listing screen but with one difference. The unit table is independent table whereas the product table has a column named unit which is referenced from the unit master table. So the product listing page is taking the data from two tables. Let's see how it is done during the development session. Let's click the create button to create a new product. This is the product creation screen. Notice this screen has select this control which will list the units from the unit table. Let's enter the product code and description first. We can see the units are listed in the select list controlled 
from the unit table. Select pieces from the unit selection list. Click create to create and save the product to the DB. Well, the product is added and showing in the listing screen. I also want to show you the edit page of the product master. The edit page is slightly different from the unit master edit page. This page has data from two tables product and unit. The unit select list showing the unit name from the unit master table. But the product master has only the unit ID in the products table. So we will learn how to do this during our development session. Let's change the unit description ladies gown to ladies full gown in the unit description text box. And then click the edit button to save the changes. Notice the description of product 01256989 has been changed to ladies full gown now. And then the delete page is very similar to the unit page and does not require any explanation. By clicking the delete button it deletes the product from the database. Of the recording I have added few more products to bring the second page link in the paging bar. Notice the second page is loading on clicking the second page link. That's it from the products module. Let's go to the next module. Let's click the country menu to go to the country module. The country module is very similar to the unit module. So we will see the features of country module in the 16x speed. Then we will see the city module. The city module is very similar to the product module. So we will see the city module in the 16x speed. The city module has a foreign key from the country master and the country names are loaded from the country master. And then we will go to the supplier module. Let's click the suppliers menu and load the supplier module. This is the suppliers listing page. The listing page is same as the other listing pages. So we will click the create button to load the supplier creation page. The supplier creation page is completely different by look, design and functionality. It has a dynamic select list. The city select list will get loaded based on the country selection list. Let's see that in action. Enter code in the code text box and enter name as Muthukrishnan in the name text box. Enter the address and then enter remarks. Select the country as India. Notice the cities of India are loaded in the city select list. Then we will select the city as Chennai. Let's change the country to United Arab Emirates. That's where I am working for the past 20 years. Notice the cities of UAE are loaded. I mean Dubai. But this fictitious supplier is from the Chennai city of India. So let's select accordingly. Then after we will enter the email ID and phone number of our supplier. Let's click the create button to save the supplier. Notice the supplier is saved and listing in the suppliers listing page. Let's edit the supplier we just created. Notice the country and city select list is set respectively. We will see how it is done during development session. And then let's also load the details page of the supplier module. Here also the country and city is showing correctly. Now let's load the delete page. Delete page is exactly same like the details page but it has the button to delete. That's it with the supplier page. Then we'll go to the customers module. The customers module is a normal correct module. It has no special features to point out. So I will show it in the 32x speed. If anything is needed we will see that during the development session. And then now we will see the transactions module. These are very important modules. This module affects the inventory position of the items. 
first we will see the material issuance note or otherwise called as outwards let's click the create button to make a new material issue note this is the material issue note creation page this is a master detail page it has a dynamic detail grid in which we can add or delete the rows as per our need Let's first enter the issuance outward note number shortly IO number and then select the customer. Enter some relative remarks. Here I am entering as cash sale. Then leave the issue date defaulted to the system date. Then in the detail grid select the product code. Notice when we select the product from the product selection list, the product description and the unit is getting populated automatically in the description box and in the unit box. Here I have used Ajax calls to populate the product description and unit to the respective boxes. Actually it is slightly difficult to do this but I will show the easiest ways to achieve this during our development session. Then when we enter the quantity we get an error that says the current stock is zero. This is also done by Ajax calls and this is more difficult and it has come very well. I will show the easiest way to achieve this also. Notice the line item validation error indicator. We cannot post the form when there is a validation error. So let's select a different item. This item has stock so there is no error. It will allow us to click the add button now. After clicking the add button next row is added to the detail grid and then select the next item. Enter the quantity. Oh this item also not available in the stock. So Let's select a different item. Hope this is available in the stock. Now enter the required quantity. I enter 1 as the quantity. Yes, this is available in the stock. Let's press the create button to save the transaction note. Our material issuance note got saved successfully in the DB and we can see the same in the listing screen. Now I will show you the edit screen. So let's click the edit button and load the material issuance note which we just saved. Wow our note is loaded without any error. Let's delete the item ladies full gown which is in the first row. Now the first row is deleted. Let's try to save the note by pressing the edit button. Yes, the note is successfully saved without any error. To verify that, let's open the material issuance note having the number i 4 os 2 in the detailed screen. Notice it has only one row, I mean the second row. The first row which was having ladies full gown as description is deleted. I have pasted the before deletion screenshot of the same for your reference. To be honest, this is one of the toughest and best method to make master detail screen. I will show the easiest way to achieve this during the development session. That's it with the material issues note. This is the current stock balance page. Current stock balance is the important requirement in the inventory software. To maintain accurate current balance statement is not easy task in an inventory software but I will show the some easiest ways to maintain 100% accurate stock balance during the development session. Then we will go to the purchase inverts module. Since the purchase invert module is similar to the material issuance module I will show it in the 16x speed. During the development session we will see if anything missed in the purchase module. After we make a purchase invert or material issuance note, automatically our 
stock balance is adjusted to match the entries. To do this, we have not running any background tasks, but I am using other powerful and easiest way to maintain the stock balance. Then I will show you the purchase inward detail screen. This is very similar to the material issuance detail screen. Now I am going to edit the purchase inward note which we just made. So let's load it in the purchase invert edit page. Last time in the material issuance note editing page we deleted one row which was working fine. This time we will add one row and click the edit button. Yes, the note got saved successfully so no errors even adding rows. I have opened the same note in the purchase invert detail page. The note has all the three rows so our program is working exactly as expected. Next we will see the purchase order module. Purchase order module is same as the purchase invert module nothing new in it. So we will see this module in 32x speed. Next we will go to user registration module. This is an important module so we will spend some time in this module. The user class of this application is inherited from the identity user. I will show you how to create custom user and roles during the development session. That's going to be very interesting. Let me enter all the details required to create a user and then we will click the register button to create the new user. Now the new user is created successfully. Notice the registration message. It says thank you for registering and your account will be activated within 24 hours. So here anyone can register by themselves but they can log in only if the admin activates the user because this software I am developing for one of my client and only employees of that company will be allowed to log in. I will show the actual website which will be launched in the Microsoft Azure soon. Let me try to log in with the user which we just created. As I told you it is giving an error saying invalid login attempt because we have not activated the user yet. Actually I have not completed the admin page to activate the user. Instead I have a workaround to act the user manually. To activate the user manually I have logged into the SQL server and have opened the ASP.NET users table in the edit mode. Let's change the value of the column email confirmed to true from false. Then close the SQL server and go back to the login screen. Let's enter the username and password again. This time I should be able to log in. Let's click the login button. Here we go. I am successfully logged in. We have completely seen all the modules of the software. Let's start the development. I am so interested to develop this project with you guys. I will try to complete this software as early as possible. But guys I really need your support because it takes lot of efforts and time to make videos. After making all the efforts if the video is not getting likes and views it really demotivates. I would be very happy if you guys like and share my videos. And finally please subscribe to this channel. Let's make this channel a big hit. That's it in this video. Thank you so, so much for watching.